Welcome to part 2 of 4. In regards to jets, there is not only a thrust force component, but also a jet velocity component. An open propeller is far more efficient at slower speeds compared to any type of a jet. However, the purpose of a jet is to attain higher air speeds compared to an open propeller. Jets become more efficient when operating at higher flight speeds compared to open propellers, making them ideal for high speed airplane flight applications. Jet velocity will determine how fast the airplane will travel through the air since the law of conservation of momentum limits a jet propulsion engine or motor flight speed to its jet velocity speed, excluding losses in aerodynamic drag. An open propeller can develop large amounts of thrust force but however accelerates mass air at a much lower velocity compared to a jet. Even at high blade pitch, at higher flight speeds, an open propeller will not accelerate mass air as fast as a jet will. So therefore, even though an open propeller can develop large amounts of thrust, it lacks the propeller discharge airflow velocity to fly as fast as a jet. If one desires high speed flight, then either an open propeller must have a variable pitch propeller to increase the blade pitch when at higher flight speeds to cause a higher rate of propeller discharge airflow to allow faster flight or implement some type of jet propulsion system whether it is a ducted fan, piston or electric, or a gas turbine driven ducted fan, a turbofan, or a purely or a pure jet operating at an extremely high hot gas jet velocity, also known as a turbojet. This is due to the fact that a properly built jet will possess much higher airflow discharge velocities than any type of an open propeller making them an excellent choice for high speed flight or high speed vehicle applications. Jet powered boats and land vehicles can also be implemented and have the advantage of higher top end speeds compared to mechanical torque and RPM delivered to a wheel or submerged water propeller. Starting at the inlet duct portion of the EDF, a larger quantity of mass airflow will enter the EDF and then constrict through the convergent inlet and increase slightly in airflow speed. Then the airflow will ingest inward by the negative pressure vacuum caused by the fan and the airflow will further constrict starting at the spinner and flow around the motor housing at a higher airflow speed compared to the rates it initially entered the EDF at the inlet and intake. As cross-sectional area increases, the pressure or potential energy of a gas in motion will increase. Conversely, as the cross-sectional area decreases, the velocity or kinetic energy of a gas will increase. The ratio between the intake pressure and exhaust velocity is the pressure ratio, or PR. It will require more power to compress the larger volume of air into a constricting exhaust nozzle while maintaining a constant amount of mass airflow. In order to calculate the performance of this EDF, in order to calculate the performance this EDF will develop, the pressure ratios between the inlet, intake, and exhaust need to be calculated. The inlet cross-sectional area which is the 90 millimeter inlet diameter or 3.543 inches then divided into 12 to convert that into diameter in feet followed by divided into 2 for radius squared times pi will equal an inlet cross-sectional area of 0 0.068 square feet same methodology applied to the in intake cross-sectional area which has a diameter of 3.043 inches divided by 12 for intake diameter in feet and divided by 2 for radius squared times pi intake cross-sectional area equals 0 0.050 square feet the exhaust cross-sectional area is equal to the intake cross-sectional area minus the cross-sectional area of the motor housing which is 1.014 inches in diameter that diameter divided by 12 to 
calculate feet diameter of motor housing, then divided by 2 squared times pi, the cross-sectional area of the motor housing subtracted from the cross-sectional area of the intake will equal the exhaust cross-sectional area, or 0.044 square feet. So to calculate the inlet to exhaust pressure ratio, we take the cross-sectional area of the inlet, 0.068, and we divide it into the cross-sectional area of the exhaust nozzle, 0.044, to equal an inlet to exhaust pressure ratio of 1.54 to 1. To calculate the inlet to intake pressure ratio, we take the cross-sectional area of the inlet, divided into the cross-sectional area of the intake, 1.36 to 1. Inlet to intake pressure ratio. To calculate the inlet, I'm sorry, to calculate the intake to inlet pressure ratio going outward, obviously it will be below 1 because the cross-sectional area is increasing. That would be the intake cross-sectional area divided into the inlet cross-sectional area or 0 0.050 divided into 0 0.068 equals 0 0.735 to 1 pressure ratio intake to inlet pressure ratio. Lastly, we have the intake to exhaust pressure ratio, which is the cross-sectional area of the intake section of the EDF, or 0 0.050 square feet, divided into the cross-sectional area of the exhaust nozzle, 0 0.044, equals an intake to exhaust pressure ratio of 1.14 to 1. From the inlet to the exhaust, the mass airflow will remain constant while its velocity will increase by a factor of 1.54 times. This is due to the inherent duct structural dimensions of this given 90 mm EDF. As for the amount of cubic feet volume of airflow which passes through each cross-sectional area stage, inlet, intake, and exhaust, this is equal to the airflow velocity times its cross-sectional area going from 2D linear the 3D volumetric airflow quantification. This particular EDF fan has a pitch rating of 3 inches or 3 inches of airflow displacement for every revolution of the fan. Typically, small model EDF fans have a rated pitch of either 3 inches or 5 inches, so the, span, so the, fan, spec, so the fan specification would equal 3.043 inches by 3 or 3043 by 3 inches stamped on the fan rotor. 3.043 inches equals the fan diameter which is equal to the intake diameter and the fan swept area. 3 inches fan pitch equates the inches airflow displacement caused by one revolution of the fan. The DC brushless motor used in this particular 90 millimeter EDF unit is a 3000 kV DC brushless electric motor. 3000 kV equals 3000 RPM per volt DC delivered to the motor when at no load conditions. The fan is nothing more than an airflow acceleration device and in this case an axial flow fan will display airflow in a linear manner, in a linear manner through a circular duct assuming zero clearance between the fan blade tips and the duct interior wall. As the fan rotates it will literally displace airflow, mass air, through the given intake diameter and cross-sectional area limits as the accelerated airflow by the fan passes through the linear airflow statters. Assume that we want to test the maximum static thrust output of this 90 millimeter EDF unit, we first we will first have to quantify how much power will actually take place in the form of mass airflow acceleration after factoring out all efficiency losses. Keep in mind that static thrust in pounds is equal to mass airflow in pounds per second times jet velocity in feet per second divided by gravitational acceleration on Earth, 32.2 feet per second squared. This given 90 millimeter EDF is using a brushless electronic speed controller with a 60 amp DC rating 
and the EDF is operating at maximum throttle. Six cells times 3.7 volts DC equals 22.2 volts DC total voltage rating of the LiPo. DC electrical power in watts is equal to voltage times current. The electrical efficiency of DC electrical power flowing through short copper wiring less than 10 feet is 96% efficient due to the inherent electrical resistivity of copper. 22.2 volts DC times 60 amps times 0.96 equals an output power in DC watts from the LiPo of 1278.7 watts DC power. 1278.7 watts of DC electrical power is delivered to the DC Brussels electric motor with an electromotive efficiency of 80%. 1278.7 watts times 0.8 equals 1023 watts of electromotive power output. This is the amount of power converted from electrical power to mechanical power at the output drive of the motor. 1023 watts of mechanical power output in the form of torque and RPM at the motor's output shaft transmitted to the fan. Typical fan propeller efficiency is rated at 80%. Propeller efficiency is the actual power a propeller or fan will deliver in the form of mass airflow acceleration from the mechanical power input from the motor or engine to the propeller or fan in the form of aerodynamic power. So 1023 watts times 0.8 equals 818.4 watts aerodynamic power. The actual mass airflow accelerated through the fan swept area or intake duct by the fan is equal to 818.4 watts of power when the throttle is set at maximum power. 818.4 watts divided by 60 amps equals 13.64 volts DC effective load voltage. After factoring out electrical, electromotive, and propeller fan efficiency losses, the actual useful power output is now in the form of mass airflow acceleration through the various stages of the EDF duct. The effective DC load voltage allowing this mass airflow acceleration to take place has been calculated as 13.64 13.64 volts DC. 13.64 volts DC times 3000 kV equals 40,920 RPM. The typical operating RPM for 90 millimeter EDF units are usually between 30,000 RPM and 47,000 RPM. The blade tips cannot exceed the speed of sound or Mach 1. Assume that the air temperature is measured at 62 degrees Fahrenheit and the 3.043 inch fan diameter is operating at night at operating at 40,920 RPM. So if we take the fan diameter in inches, well, divide it by 12 to get fan diameter in feet, and multiply it times pi, this will equal the feet circumference that the fan has at the blade tips per every one revolution. So if we take 40,920 RPM and divide it by 60 seconds, at 40,920 there will be 682 revolutions per second. 682 revolutions per second times 0.8 feet circumference per revolution of the fan at the blade tip circumference area equals 545.6 feet per second blade tip angular speed. If we take the square root of the Fahrenheit temperature of the air plus 460 to get absolute temperature of the air degrees Rankine, if we take the square root of that and multiply it times the constant of 49.022, the speed of sound will equal 1,120 feet per second when at an air temperature of 62 degrees Fahrenheit. So if we take 5 46.6 feet per second blade tip angular speed and we divide it into the speed of sound at 62 degrees Fahrenheit 1120 feet per second 
we calculate a blade tip angular speed of Mach 0.49. So this is okay, and the blade tips are operating below the speed of sound when at 40,920 RPM. This ends part two of four.